Hi, I'm Dan with Curtis, and you are sitting at home without fuel oil wondering what to do. Here is what you need to do in order to get yourself some heat. Uh, the first thing that you can do is you can go over to any convenience store or gas station with your gas can and pick up about five gallons of diesel fuel. Diesel fuel is actually the same product as heating oil. They're interchangeable. It doesn't matter if it's clear or if it's uh, red. All you're looking at doing right now is getting some heat getting through the night so that your supplier can come out the following day and uh, bring you an order. So once you go and you get your five gallons of fuel oil, you would go put it outside into your fill pipe, just pour it in. There's two pipes out there. One is smaller, one is a little larger. What you want to do is pour it into the larger pipe and it's just going to go right down into your tank. Sometimes you may need to actually put in about 10 gallons in order to get enough oil in there to make it work and get through the night. So don't be afraid to go bring two five gallon cans uh, in to do that. And uh, if you do that, you should be fine until your supplier comes the next day. Once you have oil in the tank, what we need to do is bleed the fuel line in order to get this started again. It's a simple process, just need a couple of tools. We're gonna walk through it real quick just to show you. Before you get into it, wanna make sure you go and find couple of wrenches. It'll depend a little bit on what size burner that you have or what type of burner. Uh, most of them are Beckett burners. If you're going to use a Beckett burner, you're going to want to get a 3 8 inch wrench. And there's others that are Riello burners. In this case, this is a Riello. And with a Riello, then you're going to need to get a 7 16 inch wrench. You're going to want to get an empty pop can if you have one of those around. If you don't have a pop can, you can also get something like a hose and an old ice cream bucket. What we're going to be doing with these is actually catching the product um, that lets uh, that comes through the line before it goes in to burn in the to burn in the uh, furnace. So let's get started and show you what we're doing here. All right, things can get a little messy when we do this. The trick is just take your time, be careful. I like to take some paper towels or an old rag or something and just put it underneath your burner. This unit right here is actually your burner. There's two things you're going to need to identify before you do it. Right here is our bleeder. Uh, it looks just like a Zerk on a car or maybe if you're familiar with brake lines it would look the same. And this is your restart. And the restart can be different configurations. The thing you want to look for is a red button. It might be a button like this or it might be a little pop-out button but you want to make sure you find the red button and the bleeder. Okay so first thing I'm going to do is put my wrench on the bleeder. I'm just going to use an old pop bottle right now. This is going to be catching the oil that comes out. When we first open it There shouldn't be anything that comes out. It should just be dry like this. All you have to really do is do maybe three turns. You don't want to take it all the way out. You just want to loosen it up so when the liquid comes through, we're going to be able to uh, have it pass through the bleeder. After we do that, now you need to turn your furnace on. Uh, you just go to your thermostat, wherever that would be, and turn it on to make sure it's calling for heat. And you can see right now how fuzzy and foamy this oil is. What we're waiting for is for the oil to actually turn into a, a real clear stream. We want to get rid of all the bubbles or as many as we can. And you just uh, kind of take your time, let it go for a minute or so. If it stops while you're doing that, all you need to do is go in and hit the reset button again. If it doesn't start, that simply means that there's a a lockout. So you might have to just sit and wait for a couple of moments for it to release before you can hit this again and have it um, start pumping oil through. And here we go. It's going to be coming out again. And you can see as we do this it's starting to become more clear. We'll give it just uh, another minute or so. It doesn't have to be totally clear, but you, you definitely want to give it a couple of minutes before you do it. If it takes you three or four rounds, don't worry about it. Just 
kind of hang out and wait for it to happen again. We'll try this. Oops. Have to give it a little bit more time. And when I start it up this time, what I'm going to do is simply close that zerk that I had opened up. So we we're going to do that right now. Put your wrench on. Oops. Wait a little bit for the oil to start and then just close it. You can hear that the oil went in, the furnace started. On most furnaces you'll be able to find a, uh, a sight glass where you can actually see inside to see that it's burning. Um, you can't really get it on camera here, but you can really tell when it starts. You can hear it burning in there. You can put your hand up top right here. You see it's starting to warm up right now so we know that we've got heat. And uh, that is really all there is to it. We are back in business right now. With the 5 to 10 gallons you put in, you should make it through the night, no problem. Occasionally when you do this, you may have to bleed start it one more time if you get an air bubble in the line. But normally it'll do it fine on the first one. And when you're done, you can simply take the oil that you uh, took out, go over to your fill pipe, put it back in, and Enjoy the heat till tomorrow morning when your oil company comes. Thanks.